Hello. We are going to talk about French knots today. So I am just moving this on the hoop <laughs> so that we have some space to learn. Okay. Now, one thing I like about French knots is that they're super versatile. You can use them for so many things. Um, I also like learning French knots this way, especially if you are brand new to embroidery because it gives you kind of a reference of what... Um, what French knots can look like. So French knots can be bigger or smaller depending on the number of threads you use and how many times you're wrapping your needle. So we are gonna do um, three strands and six strands and we're gonna wrap it one, two, and three times just so we can see the different sizes. Hold on, I was using my hoop stand at my desk and now I have to rearrange. This fabric is gonna get in the way if I don't. <laughs> Clamp it in there, all right. So we're gonna use French knots on a couple of the flowers. So I think that that's a good place to start. Um, and then we'll just kind of go from there. Okay. All right. I'm gonna use red just to show you, and then um, we will move on from there. I just have a lot of thread, a lot of red already pulled. Now you can do French knots with any number of threads. You can use one, two, three, four, six, 12, 18. I mean, you can use many, many strands or very few strands. It's totally, totally up to you. Um, I'm just gonna do it these two ways and then you can kind of go from there but also if you have like a small hoop and you want to create something like this that you can reference when you're doing french knots it might be helpful okay so i'm just getting my needle threaded french knots we're going to start with a hole i mean not a hole a knot so it doesn't get pulled through all right so I'm starting with three strands and then we'll do six afterwards. So a French knot is, we're going to, hold on, let me move this back. I'm gonna keep hitting that and then I can zoom. Okay. So what we're gonna do is, this is a two-handed stitch. So if you don't have a hoop stand, that's okay. I do this just, I just set my hoop down like on a table or my lap or something and do this and then I pick it up to fix it. Okay. So if you're left-handed, you're gonna do this the opposite way, and I'm sorry, I'm not left-handed, but um, so right-handed people, <laughs> um, hold your thread in your left hand. We're gonna loop this around our needle one single time, and then we're gonna go back down into our fabric. We're not gonna go in the same hole. You can see just a tiny bit that it's just not quite the same hole. It's right next to it. Okay, and then we're gonna pull our knot down to our fabric and then push our needle through. Now, if you go back in the same hole, you're more likely to pull your knot through your fabric. That's why we're not going down in the same hole. So again, we're gonna hold that to the left side. We're gonna wrap it around our needle one time. We're gonna go down right next to where we came up, pull our needle to the bottom, or pull our knot to the bottom, and then push our needle through. So this is, if you're, not using a hoop stand, this is the point where I would pick up my hoop. So I would just hold it with this hand, pick it up, and then keep your tension here until you've got your knot pulled most of the way through, and then you can pull it snug. So you're doing a bunch of things all at once. Holding this out to get tension, wrapping it, putting your needle back down, pulling that knot to the bottom, keeping your tension, pulling that knot through. Now, if you are, um, if you are twisting this too tightly 
and holding this too tightly, you're gonna have a harder time getting your needle through. You gotta, I mean, you have to loosen up just enough to get that through. Like, look how much smaller that knot is compared to this one, because I pulled it so tight. It's slightly smaller, but this one still looks good and I didn't have a problem getting my needle through. Okay, so let's move on to two. So we're gonna wrap that once, twice, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put our needle down. I'm keeping the tension, but I'm not I'm not holding it so tight that I can't pull my needle through that. Okay, so now you can see the size difference, one versus two wraps. So we're still using three strands. The other cool thing about French knots is once you bring your needle or your knot down to the end of your needle, you can say, hey, that knot does not look quite right. If you pull this back out, it'll just untwist. So then once your needle is all the way through, French knots are really hard to get out, but if you don't pull it all the way through, you still have time to pull that needle back out and try again. Now, if you are wrapping it and not pulling this tight, do you see how loose that is? That's when you start to get like funky French knots, which sometimes are great. You know, if you're doing a tree or a bush and you want like big fluffy French knots, this is the knot not being pulled tightly. So I can pull that knot, that knot tight, but it's going to keep like a loop of fabric or a loop of fabric, goodness, a loop of thread. So that's going to be your big difference of depending on how tight you're pulling this. Let's say you want to keep it kind of loose. So this one is still, I mean, it's tighter than the other ones, but it's still a little bit loose. So it's tighter than this, but looser than this. So it's kind of a little bit of both, depending on that tension. Okay, so let's go three. Okay. Now those are not quite as tight as the ones I was doing above, but do you see that size difference? I mean, that one wasn't, that one was quite a bit looser than this one, but even like to go from this to this, I mean, there's not like a huge difference, but there's a little bit. All right, let me cut this. Um, where's my scissors? Oh, there they are. Is anyone else having the video stop and start? It's not having trouble. It's not having trouble loading. Yeah, let me know. I'm not having any pop-ups saying a slow connection. Maybe try getting out and getting back in. Okay, so here is six strands. Now I put six strands in my needle and then folded it over. I'm gonna show you a trick in a minute if you're having a trouble, hold on. Okay, so six strands, let me zoom out just a little. Six strands wrapped one time. That's a lot harder to pull through than the other ones. Now this is about the same size as, it's kind of in between two and three, maybe this three pulled really tight. But if you're using six strands, it's gonna be harder to pull that knot through. So I would say keep this tension not quite as tight as you normally would. That's a big thing with six strands. 
wrap two times. But if you wanted to make a chart like this, it's a good way to practice French knots, but it also kind of gives you an idea of what they'll look like if you're using a certain number of threads. Um, and whether or not you're, like how tight you're pulling that working thread. Okay, now, if you want to use six strands, but you're struggling to get your needle through, one thing you can try is getting three strands and then tying your ends together. So then you have six, you're working with six strands, but your needle only has to go through six strands. With, with your six strands in your needle, you're having to pull 12 strands through your knot because you've got six doubled over. This way you have three doubled over. So you're still using six strands to make a knot, but you're not gonna have to work quite as hard to pull that knot through because you're not trying to pull 12 strands through that knot. You're only pulling six. Way easier, it looks the same. Same with down here, whoops. I'm not gonna be able to do too many more knots. So it's gonna look the same, but you'll have an easier time pulling that knot through. You could also use bigger needles. So like this is a thicker needle versus that one. So if you use a thicker needle, it's gonna make a bigger hole. Um, for French knots, usually the knot will cover the hole anyways, so Maybe try getting a bigger needle and see if that helps. Make it a little bit easier to get through your fabric. Um, I also wanted to talk about colonial knots. So if you struggle with French knots, it might be easier for you to do colonial knots. Um, the only thing with colonial knots is you can only make the knot bigger or smaller depending on the number of threads you're using. So um, you've got to go up or down in your um, thread count to make it bigger or smaller. So let's do a colonial knot down here. Colonial knots are a little bit more finicky. I don't like them quite as much, but they are doable. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a backwards C. Oh my gosh, can I remember how to do a colonial knot? It's been a while. Yes, I can, okay. So we're gonna do a backwards C and we're gonna come up this way and we're gonna wrap our thread around it. So then we have a figure eight or an infinity sign, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we've got our figure eight right there. And then we're gonna pull that snug to the end of our needle and pull that through. Don't worry, I'm gonna do this a few times. Again, it's gonna be harder to get through if you've got six strands, it's a little bit easier with fewer strands or if you're doing like three doubled over. Okay, so we've got our backwards C. We're gonna come up this way, make a figure eight, back down, and then pull it through. And same thing with the French knot, just kind of keep that tension out to the side. Yeah. Figure eight. And the same thing, don't go down in the same hole, go right next to it. They look nearly the same. I think that colonial knots are slightly more rounded. Um, I think that like if, I need, if I'm doing polka dots, I usually do a colonial knot because I feel like I can get them more even where French knots are all kind of different. 
Um, like they're all just slightly different. Even these two, like they're all just like a little different, but I feel like I can get these a lot more the same size. That one's not, but these two are. Um, now I do want to show you not in a hoop stand, um, how I do these. Cause I know not everyone has a hoop stand. So if you're doing French knots, hang on, let me zoom out a little so you can see my hands. So this is how I do it. If I don't have a hoop stand. So I hold on to it. I put my needle up, I set my hoop down. Do my wraps, I put my needle down, I get my knot to the bottom, and then I pick up my hoop. Oh, I'm trying to get those six strands through. Oh, that's gonna be a messy French knot. Now, look at this thread. Do you see how twisted it's getting? To fix that, with French knots, you're gonna it's gonna start to twist because of all of the like wrapping that we're doing, it's just, it's gonna get twisted. So every once in a while, pick up your hoop, let your needle just fall and untwist. And then you'll be back to square one. That's another thing. If you're struggling with your French knots, it's possible that your thread is just twisted. So let it drop and see if that helps. Okay, one more time. So we're gonna, Put your needle through, put your hoop down, wrap it, put it down, get your knot to the bottom, and then pick it up. Oh man, it's too tight, too tight. There we go. There we go. Okay, so let's get our projects out. We're gonna do French knots today. Oops. I got rid of some of my needles. I only have three now. draw my lines on here real quick first and then we'll go from there oh we forgot I forgot to do this part I'll dry this I might need to do this too I might do that later okay Do some over the top. Okay. I honestly, I don't remember what colors. <laughs> You've got plenty of greens. Pick your favorite. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to do 703. If I was doing the other color palette for the blues, for the blue house, I'd probably use 470. But really, I mean, you can just use any color you want. You've got greens to choose from. All right, 
So first thing we're gonna do is um, a back stitch or a whipped back stitch if you want um, and do those. We're gonna do the vines first and then we'll add the French knots. So this is like one of those pearl plants. What are they called? I don't remember what they're called. Pearl plant. String of pearls, that's the word. String of pearls plants. So I'm imagining these, which they're probably not in planters like this, but I think they're so cute. So anyways, that's what we're gonna do. All right, I'm gonna use two strands. Thank you, Andrea. String of pearls. I kept wanting to say mother of pearl and I was like, that is wrong. And I knew it was wrong. I just couldn't think of what it was called. All right, so I'm gonna start at the bottom just because I want to. Um, so what we're gonna do is just backstitch. So we've already backstitched. When did we backstitch? We didn't backstitch yet. Sorry, I'm trying to look. No, we didn't backstitch. Okay. Did we? I feel like we have. I'm not seeing any backstitching. Okay. So backstitching, we're going to start at one end. You can start at the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter. And then we're going to go one. Oh, the letters. Yes. Thank you. Okay. I was like, I am crazy. I swear we did. All right. So we're just gonna backstitch then. I'm not gonna go into too much detail as I stitch this. Um, I am using two strands. Um, if that matters too. So when you're stitching on top of other stitches, just make sure you're not pulling too tight because that's gonna like pull your other stitches that you're stitching on top of. So kind of keep them a little bit loose. I mean, you don't want them like loopy and falling apart, but loose enough that they're not pulling the stitches that they are on top of. So um, just like snug, but not too tight. Go in whatever loopy, swirly shape you want. Since we already covered up this part now if it was me I would go ahead and stitch all of the vines first and then go in and do French knots but I'm just gonna do these two and then I'm gonna do the French knots on them and then I'm gonna let you do the rest on your own because I don't think you need to watch me do this entire plant. Right? Okay. I just wanted to go over a few different spots that I think might be a little tricky, like going over stitches. So I wanted to make sure you could get over the different obstacles. My only struggle with things like this is I really struggle at random, like stitching random French knots on these. So it'll be a challenge, but that's okay. Now, if you want to do a whipped back stitch on this, you totally can. Just keep in mind that it's going to be a little bit harder to um, to do a whipped back stitch like over this brick um, or over this basket weave. So I feel like I'm okay without doing it because 
I'm just gonna put a French knot at every back stitch. So I'm using two strands. I'm gonna do some of them double wrapped and some of them single wrapped just to kind of break it up um, and keep things interesting. Keep to kind of that randomness. Some of these spots, I'm gonna put two French knots. Some of them I'm gonna put one. Some are gonna go on the right side, some are gonna go on the left side, some are gonna go right into the middle. So kind of just try to keep it just kind of random. This is an excellent time to practice French knots because plants are not, I mean, there's very few plants that are like exactly the same everywhere you look. So we're not gonna worry about perfect French knots. This side too. That spot's a little bit. Blink. See, I don't think it would matter if this was a whipped back stitch because I'm putting a knot on every one of those stitches. And so it's you can't really tell that it's a back stitch. I mean, not that it would matter, even if you could. I mean, this is a, an embroidery piece. You can see the stitches, that's fine. Now we're gonna take the same precautions when we're stitching on top of our basket weave and just pull gently, come up gently. Um, I like to try and come up and split a stitch versus coming up between stitches so that it doesn't have an issue with um, dividing that stitch. I am using two strands but you could use one. I wouldn't recommend three. So I'm splitting that, you can't see cause it's too dark, but I'm splitting that stitch versus coming up between two stitches. and do my one at the bottom and then I'm gonna let you go. Nope, I don't want it there. I'm gonna share that hole. Okay. So there's our cute little plant. Now it'll look better <laughs> when we get these others vines on there. Right now it's looking a little crazy. But I will work on this throughout the afternoon and I'll post a picture to my stories when I'm done. Um, but yeah, there we go. Cute little plant. We'll add, we'll add the strings another day. But anyways, okay. Let me know if you have questions once you get working on this. You can use French knots or colonial knots. I would still use two strands even if you're going to do colonial knots. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do, I wouldn't do three. I would do one or two strands. Same with the French knots. So, all right, have a good afternoon and I will see you back here tomorrow. Bye.